praise the lord i see that we've been standing for a while let's have our seats we're still going to worship god but let's have our seats how many of us were at the conference you were at the conference ah raise your hand now don't be too spiritual <laughs> you were at the conference the first day the last day the first day or the every of the days raise your hand can we give the lord a clap of it? you know the enemy tried everything possible so that we we'll not have that conference but we had it we give god all the praise unfortunately even christians i don't know why they have so much issues with city of david all the things that we do but we thank god because god is faithful hallelujah i still want us to worship god this morning i still want us to adore him this morning i still want us to i wanted to make sure just in case maybe there's still somebody that is yet to get into it this morning i wanted to really get into it this morning let me tell you say i wanted to get into it this morning say i wanted to get into it this morning uh, are we very tired from the conference let me ask your neighbor say are you tired from the conference uh, maybe that's why we don't even have a lot of people in church this morning hallelujah come on say don't be tired we lift you up Yahweh, Yahweh. we lift you up I just want us to worship God this morning. We lift you up. Yahweh, Yahweh. Father, we lift you up. Yahweh, Yahweh. Because you are the only God. Oh! 
And say everything that is unpleasant in your life disappears this morning in the mighty name of jesus if you've got utterance i want you to pray in tongues would you please pray for your neighbor to your left to your right this morning that everything that does not represent god disappears today Everything that does not represent God, everything that represents unpleasantness disappears. Everything that is not godly disappears from your life this morning. Everything that does not represent the will of God, everything that does not represent the life of God, everything that does not represent the blessing of God disappears from your life this morning. They disappear this morning. Every unpleasantness disappears this morning. Everything unpleasant disappears this morning. Every sickness disappears this morning. Every sickness disappears this morning. In the name of Jesus, every wound disappears this morning. Every heart disappears this morning. Everything ungodly disappears this morning. We've come to everywhere this is for someone here this morning in every situation that looks as if you are in a fix i decree a release right now in the name that is above every other name in the name of jesus i decree release upon you this morning in everywhere that it looks as if you are in a fix thank you jesus lord i pray that you please break every word here this morning to pieces and let it fit into every heart here in the name of jesus and those that are watching online and those that will even see this broadcast after now lord let the same power the same anointing that is available here let it reach out to them in the mighty name of jesus thank you father for our prayers in jesus mighty name we have prayed in jesus mighty name we have prayed praise the lord praise the lord let me tell your neighbor say the life i now live i live by faith in the son of god the life i now live to another neighbor 
I live by faith in Jesus Christ. John chapter 10, verse 10. It's a scripture that we should all know now, just like we know Psalm 23 from the very first verse to the very end. We've just ended the conference, the festival of the light, light and we talk more specific, uh, specifically about Jesus, the restorer of life. Hallelujah. The thief cometh not but to, for to steal and to kill and to destroy. This was Jesus speaking here. I am come. You see, it is always in the present continuous tense. And I pray that God will come for you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly more abundantly john chapter 11 verse 25 to 26 john 11 25 to 26 john 11 25 to 26 the bible said jesus said to her i am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me though he may die he shall live verse 26 says and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die if i jesus asked a question he said do you believe this jesus christ asked a question after that he said do you believe this so let me ask your neighbor say do you believe this you know we have been taught a lot of things in the scriptures that are unfortunately wrong like i've always said here in this church i celebrate every man of god all the big men of god but i will take the word of god over and over above them but that does not reduce or remove my respect from them praise the lord praise the lord we are all or at one time or the other we've attended school and for those that are still attending school sometimes you challenge your teacher in class that no you are wrong how many how many persons have you know been in that situation before or you were in the class and somebody challenged the lecturer or the teacher how many how many people Ah, I was thinking there are no geniuses in this class, in this, in this church, hallelujah. But we are geniuses, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So sometimes your teacher, because your teacher is also looking at a material. So sometimes he, he or she can make mistakes while looking at those materials. So it's not as if those men of God are totally wrong. That is the level of the knowledge that they have. But I won't say because I respect, permit me to use the word for you now, apostle apostle smart i will not say because apostle smart as an apostle has said something wrong and i'll continue to live my life by that i will not disrespect him but i will go back to the scripture and check and be sure of what is right praise the lord praise the lord so the life that you have now is the life of who is the life of who now that life is a person that life is what is a person so and if you have that life on the inside of you there are so many other things that are supposed to be at your fingertips you are not supposed to hustle for them you are not supposed to um kill yourself over those things hallelujah for example you are not expected to be in a position of sickness if you are a christian Praise the Lord. You are not supposed to be what? In a, because you have the life of Christ. Can Jesus be sick? No, let's answer now. Can Jesus be sick? No, you can be weak. When you have stressed yourself, you can have a headache. You can have... For some people that came from where I came from, God's own country, you can have malaria. Praise the Lord. You know, I had it with one of my professors in Cyprus in those days. I said no. Malaria is a you look at your mosquito, they are so big, they are bigger than the ones that we have in Africa. <laughs> but he argued with me, said, No, you can't get malaria. If you're having malaria, it's the one that is left in your blood from where you were coming from. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so I pray for you. If you still have malaria in your system, God will wash it away. But don't go back to that place so that you don't get it again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, somebody's protesting. Okay, you can go back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
So sometimes because of where we are coming from, all the wrong wrongs that we have been taught. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 14. James 5, 14 to 16. Is anyone among you sick? So what, what does that statement mean? It means no one is expected to be sick. That's what it means. That's why James was asking this question. Just in case there is anyone that is sick. Don't get this wrong. There's no time to do all the analysis. We're talking about being in a position, in a state of sickness. That's what we're talking about this morning. Is anyone among you sick? Obviously, for somebody to come up to the point that, oh, I'm sick. That means the person has tried everything and nothing seems to be working. Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So, what that is simply saying is that, if you are sick, that means something probably has happened to you. You lost your faith, or you were weak, or you could not apply your faith, and then you are sick. So, what would the elders do at this point? They are there to help your faith. They are there to intercede for you. Because Jesus Christ already said in Matthew chapter 16, I think verse 19, Matthew 16, 19. He said, can you let me put it up? Matthew 16, 19. That's where he was saying that, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And I will give you, that's why some people that were in church on Friday, I shared something briefly with them. We need to really understand how to study the scriptures. But I will not even say those things now because we have a bit larger congregation this morning. So that those people I had in church on Friday, I was able to, so that if anybody had doubts, I could quickly correct and we could check more in the scriptures. Hallelujah. So in this place, Jesus was more like what? Prophesying. Because there are ways you study the scriptures. But some of the things I said on Friday, I won't say it. Please tell your neighbor, say, be coming to Friday service. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So the question is, has Jesus given us that key? Okay, those that are in church on Friday. Has Jesus given us that key? Yes, he has given us that key already. So it was then that he was saying he will. But he gave us that key already by his death and resurrection on the cross. So we have the key. And whatever you bound will be you bind will be bound. Whatever you lose will be what? So it simply means also if you are sick, you can lose that. You have that access. If you have the keys of the kingdom of heaven, that means you can enter anytime and come out anytime. You can make decisions in the heavenlies anytime and come back at any time. I know we've been taught that we need pastors to lay hands. We need pastor. If you want to we, you have to call your pastor. If you want to do whatever, you have to call your pastor. No, it's not true. You have the key if you are born again. You have the key if you are born again. So you have the key. So if you are going to, so you don't need. Let me ask us this question. I will ask, but I will move on from it. Do we really need heaven to get prayers answered on earth? Praise the Lord. If you are sure of yourself, let me, let me, let me see you wait. Do we really need heaven to come and answer prayers on earth? No. Yes. How many of us agree that we really don't? Because we have that access. Let me tell your neighbor, say it's in you. Just like Isaiah was prophesying. Isaiah was not just only prophesying about the time of Jesus. He was prophesying also about our time. That's why he said in Isaiah 53, 5, that by his stripes, you are healed. You are healed. So you are not supposed to be in a status or in a state of sickness. That is one of the things that you have with the life that you have in you. With the life that has been restored into you. That is one of the things that you have. Hallelujah. Another thing that you need to know that I want you to know this morning. Is that sin has no power over you. I pray that God will give you the heart for maturity this morning. To carry what I want to say. And even if you sin, 
that sin will not take you to hellfire. You will suffer the consequences of your own sin. Praise the Lord. Because there is nothing you are going to do that can be worth the blood of Jesus on the cross. There is nothing you are going to do. There is nothing. He took your place. He became a cause for you. So, if Jesus will now say, because you lied yesterday, you are going to hell, then it will mean that the death of Jesus on the cross is worthless. Because it will still mean that you are still working for your own salvation. That's why, I think Ephesians chapter 2, maybe verse 9, says, it is not of works, lest anyone should boast. So, stop feeling too born again over some people that you see that they are doing some wrongs in the physical. What about what you do in your own closet? Praise the Lord. So stop feeling too born again for some people. Let people have freedom. Do you even know that some of those people that are doing those things that are not right, that you are seeing, is even better because they can repent, they can change. But you, you are doing some things that nobody knows about. How are you going to save yourself? First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2 from verse 1. First John chapter 2 from verse 1. My little children, these things are right to you so that you may not sin. Can we read the next statement together? We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Even if anyone sins, there is an advocate always pleading your cause. So it's not what you do. It's not your righteousness at all. Of course, if you read further, let's go to verse, verse 2. And he himself is a propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Verse 3. Now, by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. So, that life that you have re received helps you to keep his commandment. It's not actually to be checking yourself every time. Oh, have I fallen today? Have I? No, 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 no. It helps you to keep relationship with Christ. That's what that life helps you to do. So let me tell your neighbor, say, sin has no power over you. The third point this morning, before I go to what I really want to talk about, briefly. You are already an overcomer. You are not going to be an overcomer. You are not going to be victorious. So if you, were, if you find yourself in a challenge that is getting too long, Maybe you fail to realize some things that you should have done. That's why you are staying too long or too prolonged in that situation. Praise the Lord. You are already what? An overcomer. First John chapter 4 verse 4. The Bible says, He that is in us is greater. He said, by this we know we overcome them. Can you let me put the scriptures up please? First John chapter 4 verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is what? Is greater than he that is in the world. So you are not just going to overcome. So a lot of time it is our knowledge that keeps us where we are. And we are thinking, so some things that we should, we should do sometimes, I'm sure Jesus will just be looking at us and say, Ah, see this boy, see this girl. That's what he's supposed to do. That's what he's supposed to do. And that's why we need to enter into that life really because if you have entered into that life you will not struggle with sickness if you have entered into that life, you will not struggle with sin if you have entered into that life you will not even struggle with defeat because you are not you can't be defeated if you are defeated you are rendering the death of christ just like god cannot hold you and say because you have done this sin so you are going to hell so also, if you make yourself like a defeated person, you are also you are doing the same thing. You are ready the death of Christ. Useless. May the death of Christ not be useless in, in us in, in the name of Jesus. You are an overcomer already. So when we talk about that word, let your light so shine. You must have graduated at least from these three things. You must know that first... Because somebody that is sick, how will that person minister healing to another person? Somebody that is living in sin, 
How will that person tell another person not to do sin? Somebody that is always complaining. How will that person encourage another person? Praise the Lord. Are we getting something this morning? Hallelujah. So Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 says, Let your light so shine that people may see and glorify your heavenly Father. So that light shining, I want us to understand this this morning. If this is the only part of the message you get, it's very important. That light shining is not when you provide, when somebody needs something and you give that person that thing. It's not that light shining. Because you know what? Unbelievers, are they not doing so? They are doing so. Unbelievers are doing so. So from today, I want to encourage you. Anytime you read Matthew 5, 16, learn to add to it. Act chapter 10, verse 38. Let's look at Act chapter 10, verse 38. Let's look at what it means for your light to be shine, for you to be really good as a Christian. Because you're being good as a Christian. The good of unbelievers is most times actually better than our own good. Of course, we need to change about that. But that's not the real good. This is what it means to be good. This is what it means to shine the light. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing what? Doing what? So, was there any time you saw Jesus give somebody money? No, no, no. I want us to answer this question this morning. Was there any time? I'm not saying you should stop giving people money because that is the standard of unbelievers. Of course, we should live above that. We should even do more than that. But the good of Jesus is what? Doing the things that ordinary men cannot do. That's the good of Jesus. So, if you give somebody clothes, well done, congratulations. Our believer can do that as well. So, if that is your own definition of letting your light shine, you are not different from unbeliever. So, actually, no light is shining yet. No light is shining yet. And healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So, your doing good is being able to do what ordinary, that is what Jesus Christ was talking about. That's what he was talking about. Because even somebody called him a good master, he said, no, don't call me good. Nobody is actually good under the earth, except the heavenly father alone. So, your being good is the ability to do the things that ordinary men cannot do. That is what distinguishes you from other people that you have received the life of God. So I started by explaining those things I explained first because these are some basic things that we struggle with. That's why I explained those things first. So that we know that we are not even supposed to be at that level at all as Christians. Of course, by the grace of God. So you're being good. You're shining the light. Is being able, I'm repeating that statement again, being able to do what ordinary men cannot do. Being able to do what ordinary women cannot do. Being able to do what ordinary girls cannot do. Being able to do ordinary what ordinary boys cannot do. So, the time I will know that I've shined the light. So, with this understanding, if I ask you now, this is the last Sunday in the month of October. So, have you shined the light or have you shine is shown <laughs> have you shine or shown which shown hallelujah don't worry i'm an african man thank you i see your time thank you so much have you this year from the beginning of the year to this point in time let me ask your neighbor i allow you talk within one or two minutes Tell the person now, you now know what it means to shine the light. How much have you done it? Please talk, 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 talk. Ask your neighbor. Please ask your neighbor. How many people have you healed? How many oppressed have you drawn out of the oppression? How many victory have you received for someone else? We cannot talk. <laughs> because indeed it looks as if 
our understanding of doing good has been has been crushed tell your neighbor say that's good that you were doing before don't stop it <laughs> still give people money still encourage people still let somebody know that there's a job vacancy somewhere still let somebody know that there's one house that is vacant but unbelievers are already doing these things what is your difference what is the difference between you and them if that is the level that you are shining your light so if we are shining light please stay in act 10 38 if you are shining light what it means to shine light is that you can do what ordinary people cannot do because that is what you know confirms that the life of christ is actually in you that is what confirms that the life of god is actually in you your ability to heal your ability to deliver your ability to say something and it will come true your ability to be in a place and people are confused and they say no we need to go and meet this person your ability to be in a place and say this problem we are having let's go and meet this person it will be sorted out your ability to declare something and it will happen your ability to to arrive in a place and they say oh she has come hey, he has arrived that is what it means to shine the light that is what it means to shine the light your ability to see somebody that is sick and say no no oh, i know you are going to go to the hospital and pray for the person believing that even if the, before the person gets to the hospital the healing has already happened hallelujah 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 it's like you don't like my face again praise the lord of course continue to do good help people all those things but i'm just telling you that the shining of light that jesus was referring to is beyond that because the pharisees and the sadducees they were doing all those things already they were doing those things already in fact unbelievers know how to do those things more because the more they know they give you you'll be under them they are controlling you they are controlling you they are controlling you some of you that like to run after unbelievers, you better run after Jesus. You better run after Jesus. At the end, that person you are running after, either black, either white, either yellow, either orange, whatever color, at the end, they are going to put you under, under themselves. That is the idea. I'm just trying to let you know the truth. Maybe some of you must have seen. The moment you try to shake yourself out of that, they begin to fight you. Because the idea in the first place was to put you under them so they can control you. So lastly this morning, my time is up already. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 was a story of the madman that was possessed by legions of demons and jesus christ came and healed him you know i want to take it off from verse 15. then they came to jesus now let me take it from so that we can understand in case someone is here and has not read it before verse from verse 8 but i'll be very fast for he said to him come out of the man unclean spirit then he asked him what is your name and he answered saying my name is legion of course this is an example of being good here for we are many also he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country now verse 11 a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains verse 12 so all the demons begged him saying send us to the swine that we may enter them and at once jesus gave them permission then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine there were about two thousand and this the earth ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea verse 14. so those who fed the swine fled and they told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that happened verse 15 
Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. Verse 16. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon possessed and about the swine. 17. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. Let me tell you something. If you refuse to live the life that Christ had given to you, you know, you will continue to be under some people. You will continue to, you won't be able to even fully express the life that God has given to you. You see, this man that was healed in this place, you know why they were telling Jesus to leave? It's not just because of the business that has been that has been sabotaged for them. But do you know that when, they, when that man is displaying the madness, you know, they will be in their houses and be looking. So it was also a game for them. So in case you don't know, if you refuse to leave, now that the man is in his right mind, there is no movie for them to watch again. There is no lunacy dis display for them to see again. So, it's like what is making, if you refuse to leave your potential, you are making some people to be happy. If you refuse to live the life that God has given to you, you are just increasing the joy of some people. The day you realize yourself, haven't you noticed that when you are progressing in life, some people are naturally sad. When you begin to make progress in life, things begin to happen to you. Some people become naturally what? sad because everything they derive from your being in low places they cannot derive it again you are not under them anymore let me tell your neighbor say it is important that you live this life that god has given to you verse 18 and when he got into the boat he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him however jesus did not permit him but said to him go home to your friends and tell them what great things the lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you and that is my message this morning that you will go home and showcase the life of Christ in you that you will go home and without shame without fear lay your hands on the sick that you will go home and prophesy into you are not prophesying because you want to impress anybody no even if you cannot prophesy you can begin to declare the words of God to people's lives somebody is around you is not feeling all right keep declaring the word of God keep declaring the word of God We've heard a testimony of somebody in, in our church here that at, that at work, there was an issue at work with somebody and then the person, by prophecy, by prophecy, the person may think she prayed. Yes, she prayed. But by prophecy, said this and this. And that happened. And the person got the job. Hallelujah. You can do the same. That is the life that God is expecting us to live. The first time in my life, that i love one man of god so much but when i was just growing in the lord i used to think why, why is this man always making people to fall down i'm talking about pastor chris and why is he always making people to fall down you know because it will just do like this and people will fall so the first time i was called upon in a meeting to pray for some people and then i i want to share one secret with you and then i laid my hands i was not fasting I was not even praying. They just invited me to pray. Because I was the prayer secretary in that place. I'm talking about, I think 2001, this 2001 or 2002 is this thing that I'm talking about. And I laid my hands on the first person. And boo, the person went on the floor. I was like, eh? Eh, me care. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I did the second. Eh? Ah? Uh -uh. Is that is real? <laughs> From that, the honestly, I started appreciating Pastor Chris even more. Because I now realize I entered into the realm that he was operating at the time. At that time for me. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you know that the moment you begin to express the life of Christ, you begin to increase in it. That's what I'm trying to get at. You see all this, um, even though re wrestling is acting, don't do wrestling at home. They are acting it. It's not real. You know that when the Stone Cold, I think Okogan, that's the one I used to watch in those days with my parents. You know when they are eating something, they say, it will be like this. As in the power will be coming up. When you live in the life of Christ, in the reality of it, you are not, there is no limit. You will, I, I don't know how to explain sometimes. Sometimes when I feel anointed, sometimes I feel like electric shock all over my body. And it can be so heavy that at that time, I can enter and dare anything. So when you choose to live the life of Christ, that is, you don't have to be a pastor. I just became a pastor in 2016. I was never a pastor. And God has done a lot of things through me. Even in those periods. And he's still doing things. And he will continue to do in the name of Jesus. Let's rise on our feet. When you dare to enter into that life. Lord, I offer my life to you. Everything I did true. Use it for your glory. Lord, I offer my life to you. Lift in my praise to you. As a living sacrifice Lord I offer you my life. Lord I offer my life to you everything I in true use it for your glory Lord prayer point this morning if you don't realize your own self i tell you the truth there's no way you can reach out i want you to pray to god and say lord help me to realize myself go ahead and pray for yourself this morning pray that god will help you to realize yourself pray that god will help you to realize your own self because if you still feel sick it will be difficult for you to pray for a sick person so pray that god will help you to realize yourself if you still feel poor it will be difficult for you to pray for somebody that is poor so pray that god will help you to realize your own self pray that god will help you to realize yourself this morning it does not matter what level you are high school university at your place of work you can do you can stand in for god because that is the life he has given to you secondly this morning there are souls dying in sydney in cape breton and we are we are probably around 60 people here this morning or maybe more i don't know there are so many people in cape breton dying they are waiting for your touch they are waiting for your word of encouragement they are waiting for your prophecy they are waiting for you to minister to them they are waiting for you to prophesy into their lives. They are waiting for you to pray for them to get healed. Why not pray that God will give you the boldness and the courage this morning? 